series today. I'm very excited to have a friend and uh, acquaintance uh, here, Saru Verma, who is currently a senior product manager at BetterHelp, an online platform that provides access to mental health services. Prior to this, Saru was an analytics leader at eBay, PayPal, and Just Answer. Thank you so much, Saru, for being with us tonight. Of course. Thank you for having me, Hand. It's an honor. Yeah. And if you're in San Francisco, you can find him teaching classes at True Fusion. He's a fitness instructor. And for those who are joining live um, with us, please feel free to pop in any questions that we can get to later on. Thank you again, Saroop. So my first question to you is, how did you get into product management from being an analytics? Um, it's a good question. I actually don't think I had any inkling initially to do sort of product management. I feel like actually my entire career path was just kind of society telling me what to do and like me being like, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. And so that's in a way kind of how I got into analytics right after college was like, oh, I guess I will try product man or analytics, did it, enjoyed it, had to learn SQL, had to learn coding, all those things from scratch. It was a fun experience to go through all that. Um, as I grew within my analytics uh, domain, um, eventually it got to a point where uh, I was no longer an individual contributor. So I was starting to manage people. And that in and of itself has its own gift. It's its own gift. It's had, it has its own rewards. Um, however, I started to realize that when I started to fully get disconnected from the actual hands-on work to only people management, uh, that was not really starting to sit well with me just because I was feeling like I was no longer sort of on the cutting edge of what, like where I wanted to be and the things I wanted to learn. Uh, the ultimate sort of end goal or path or vision I had for myself was, you know, I want to make an impact. I want to uh, reach as many people as I can and improve their lives. Now, this, this can be through entrepreneurship opportunities or intrapreneurship opportunities. And so when I was at this sort of like junction where okay, do I keep building my career in analytics or do I transition to something else? Product management kind of came within my realm. And again, oh, yeah. other sort of friends had suggested that, hey, like maybe you should consider it. And what was funny is like, it felt aligned to my higher purpose of what I just mentioned, which was I want to have an impact on people's lives in a positive way. And I want to be sort of in the driver's seat of that impact. I don't wanna be supporting, I don't wanna be a support role. I wanna actually be in charge of creating that experience for people. And so I think that's kind of the journey where it started from analytics, learned a lot in analytics that I'm happy to kind of talk upon uh, as, we, as we go further in the conversation. Uh, but yes, the actual transition was, you know, product management is a step toward attaining the business acumen necessary for whatever it is that I want to do, which is to reach and impact people in a positive way. And is that how you got into health, health and wellness? Uh, yes, I, actually it is because health and wellness has been something that's been near and dear to me. Um, it, it was my focus on fitness was the reason that I kind of climbed out of the worst depression of my life, uh, my ability to, I think, just kind of focus on seeing, you know, day by day, step by step, the benefit that wellness, you know, be that mental, physical, spiritual can bring into people's lives. Because at the end of the day, we're humans and we need to take care of our minds, take care of our bodies so that we can go out in the world and do big, beautiful things. Um, that's, yeah, that's kind of why wellness and wellness and tech became so interesting to me and something I wanted to pursue. And I would imagine the impact part kind of tying in also having an impact in um, tech, health tech, tying that. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like 
you know, it, it's it's uh, tech is incredible in that it allows you access to millions very quickly, very efficiently. And so if you want to make a big change, usually tech is the right tool or is, is a good tool, I should say, um, to drive that, that magnitude of impact. And so, you know, wellness, definitely you could open up your own private practice of say therapist. You could open up your own gym as a personal trainer that wants to share that or a physical therapist, any number of those things. And in any given year, you would be impacting thousands, maybe tens of thousands if you're like a really big business. It's hard to get to a scale of millions. And so that's where I think tech can really elevate your reach. And uh, it's also why I think that tech is always kind of where I want to be, at least somewhere in the, somewhere within the realm of what I may be thinking about. And how has your background in data and analytics uh, helped you in your PM career? And how has it helped you in this health tech uh, industry that you're in? Uh, that's a good question. I, I think it's, so I think analytics is actually a great place to start. I wouldn't change a thing, even though I mentioned that I kind of stumbled into it. I wouldn't change a thing because when you're in analytics, you're kind of forced to understand how companies measure the data that is being captured to improve its processes. A lot of what a product manager does is essentially looked at in terms of impact by data folks. And so the skill sets that I acquired within, data, within analytics was, for example, understanding how to size an opportunity and do so in a way that also I kind of develop an intuition quickly around, oh yeah, this is how many people this would impact or this is the impact, this is the size of this problem that, and, and see if it's worthwhile pursuing. Like really understanding the impact and the, rather the impact on the ROI. So like, you know, what is your return on the investment that you're trying to put in? The return part became easier to uh, visualize for me through data. The other part of it that I think is also interesting from uh, like to come from an analytics background is you start to understand why metrics are the way they are. So like, why is it that certain businesses value specific types of metrics over others? Now, if it's a subscription model, for example, you're always gonna be concerned with how many people you're converting and more so what is their retention, for example. Analytics can help you, or at least a background in analytics, in my opinion, can help you get into the nitty gritty. So like a subscription model that we talked about, retention is important, but what about quality? What about you know uh, specific edge cases that you may not be realizing are slipping through that when you bring a data background, when you bring an, uh, your ability that data gives you to like put a metric in place that didn't exist ever. And you're just like, okay, I think this metric makes sense. This is why it makes sense. I think that part was uh, a gift from analytics because then you are allowed, once you start to measure a problem, even if, no matter how unconventional that metric may be, once you start to measure a problem, then you can start to improve the problem, right? If you have zero clue on the measurement, then it's hard to even go about visualizing how you would even improve it what would be the impact and i think any person can pick this up but i think that analytics definitely helped me understand and go in these places these nuanced places of like this metric no other company is using but this is why it makes sense for this company and that's why we should have this as our north star for example and that's outside of like your common metrics of conversion revenue retention referrals all that Got it. And are there any like metrics that a product manager or as somebody who's just entering product management that should under they should understand even more in depth just so they they have in their toolbox? 
Uh, that's a good question. I think it's it's hard to say that with sort of like a brush stroke, like a like a generic brush stroke of like, oh yeah, these are the metrics. I think a good starting point is the pirate metrics. So I think they are well. I'm like, I I know this acquisition, activation, revenue, referrals. And I think retention's in there as well somewhere. And I think that's a good place to start for any business because ultimately it always touches one or another part of the business, those pirate metrics. It's a good place to start, but it, it would very much depend on your specific role. So to give you an example, my role at BetterHelp is specifically focused around quality and improving uh, the quality of the therapy being delivered. So for me, my metrics are far more focused around how many people are having a good experience versus how many of them are having a bad experience when they quit or switch, for example, or not even if they quit and switch, but like how many of them are having a good or bad experience. Uh, that's got nothing to do with the pirate metrics, but it's still a very important metric for me. So I think that's kind of where the difference of the nuances are in terms of when you're starting out in product management, it's good to be open, be curious, and be aware that you may have these nuanced metrics, but a starting place would be the pirate metrics and being super familiar with them when you're starting at a company or in on any product management journey. Yeah, that's wonderful advice. And uh, how did you prepare yourself to get into product management as you transitioned from the analytical role that you had? That's a that's 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 an interesting journey, actually. Uh, I was given a lot of sort of advice on things that a product manager does. So when I was first transitioning, it was very overwhelming. I didn't quite know what product management was about. I had gotten glimpses of it in my analytics role, working with my product partners, but there was a whole side of it that I didn't know. I didn't know how to talk to engineers, for example. I did not know how to work with designers. I did not know uh, that entire world. I just knew the relationship that I had with my product partner and it was between analytics and product management. That said, a couple of things that are good to start with are use the product. Like whatever company you may be going to, use the product. Understand what is it that you're going to be working with. Because when you use the product, you start to understand the nuances of why certain things are built a certain way versus not. Or at least it gives you the opportunity to ask those questions when you get there. So you're not appearing completely like deer in headlights, like, oh, what, what, what is going on? You actually can ask capable questions. Another one is use the competitor's products. Understand why is it that the competitors have certain features that you don't, or why you have certain features that your competitors don't. Number three, I think is understand the business model upon which your company or product that you're designing is uh, utilizing. So in a lot of cases, I, right now, especially subscription-based models are very popular. So understand why is it that your specific company, in my case, BetterHelp, for example, why does it utilize a subscription-based model versus a, say, paper pay therapy model? Understand those nuances. And then I think number four is understand what the offline version of your online version is solving or, or, or does, I guess. What are the nuances that exist with, in my case, therapy that takes place in an offline setting? What are the interactions? What are the uh, starting and ending points of therapy in an offline setting? Because once you're aware of like the industry that the tech component is disrupting, then you can start to bring intelligently those components and make the online version not only more familiar, but then also improve upon certain processes that don't make sense in an online setting, but did make sense in an offline setting. And just to put into perspective, you transitioned from one of your, uh, you were at the same company and you transitioned from a 
an, uh, from analytics to product man management within the same company. That's right. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, I was at Just Answer and I had an, an I started in an analytics capacity. I, you know, got a chance to manage a team, build out a team in a new country, all of the like amazing experiences. And then within Just Answer, as the company was transitioning from a paper question model, and just again, some context, Just Answer is an online professional uh, services marketplace. So if you have a question for a lawyer, doctor, veterinarian, 80,000, or sorry, 80 categories or so, you can ask your question and get an individualized response to you directly for your needs. Going back to the transition, just answer was on a paper question model. They wanted to move over to a subscription based model, at least try it out, experiment. And not only was I the lead analyst in that transition, but then I also uh, expressed my interest to move to product management. And that particular experiment ended up being the perfect sort of transition uh, into product management for me because I was the analyst, I was the PM. Some may say that, oh, so you made your test win. That, no, <laughs> but I can see why somebody would say that. Um, thank, thank goodness that's why there's like red tape and all the stuff around. Um, that's why there are executives around. Uh, but yeah, it, that it was, it was a, an interesting sort of learning to have all that context of like business model, why the uh, company was existed. I had utilized the product. I had obviously done a lot of competitive research. So all that I already had going in and I still found it to be a challenge because there was a whole side of product management that I had no idea about. And then when you transitioned into like health, how was that transition from um, just changing industries? I think that was a less jarring uh, transition. I feel like product management, once you kind of understand how to view problems or like how to empathize with what the customers might be going through, which is, I think, a very important product management trait. But once you understand that, I think industry to industry becomes less painful in terms of a transition. I think it's far less jarring. I think it's far more uh, of a challenge to transition from say analytics or design or engineering into product management. But within industries, I think the big things you need to, again, keep in mind are utilize the product, utilize the competitor's product. And once you have sort of the product management acumen, if you will, which is why do these problems exist? What are the problems that exist in this industry that this particular company, product, et cetera, is solving? Then it becomes easier to transition within industries, I think. Each industry has its nuances, for sure. I'm not discounting that at all. But once you understand that your job there is to go and solve these problems, it becomes far easier to pick up on the problems and understand how is it that you would try to solve them. Uh, so in your opinion, what are the key qualities or skills a product manager should have? In my personal journey, I have had, I've had to, I think, utilize these skills. I'll talk about these skills, but I've utilized the, these skills that I'm about to talk about as in, in varying capacities as a way to, uh, I think, become a better PM. Starting with, you have to be open to feedback and criticism. 100%. You have to leave your ego at the door because the funny thing about, about product management is it's as much art as it is science. It's as much you defending your point of view as others challenging your point of view. So if you took everything to heart, you would be, you would have bad days every day. So you have to leave your ego at the door you have to be open to feedback and criticism and also be able to chat, like essentially defend why is it that you're, you, you have certain opinions or why you have certain perspectives. That's, I think, number one. Number two, 
you definitely should be aware of the nuances of your industry. So again, the broader industry of like, why is it? Like, so when we're talking about forming your own opinions, why are you forming your own opinions? Sure, you, you're looking at your own company and you're looking at your own uh, problems that may exist within your company, but what is going on at the industry level? And why is it that you should, as, as, as visionaries, if you will, of the company, as entrepreneurs, it's your job to propel the company in a direction of profitability, in a direction of not even just profitability, but impact like making sure that your product's actually delivering value for the client. And so it's important to know what is going on in the overarching industry in the world that may impact your particular product and your sort of delivery of your service. Um, what else would I say is like a key quality? I would say definitely being aware of your metrics and like understanding what your KPIs are and like, for me, my sort of regimen, and I think I got this from analytics and like my career in analytics, every day that I get up and I'm like logging in, first thing I do is I go check my dashboard of like all the important metrics that I track on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis to know what is it that I am actually doing and, and how to chart my kind of course for what is it that that week or that day I'm going to focus on. Uh, in addition to sort of other responsibilities, but knowing where your metrics stand, or at least intu having an intuitive intuitive sense of, oh yeah, this metric is, doesn't make sense. It shouldn't be here. It should be here. Why is it here? Is a very, 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 very important quality. I think managing without authority is another big one. So as a product manager, you're working cross-functionally. And in a way, you're a leader cross-functionally. Engineering's looking to you. Design's looking to you. Analytics is looking to you. None of them report to you. So how do you get them rallied for your idea, for your cause, for your, like, hey, guys, I think this is the path forward. And this is why we should do it. And I have zero authority on you. So you can't even, you know, you can't even exercise that. So you have to really rely on your business case to get them convinced to them to be, for them to then feel excited about why is it that you're doing what you're doing. Um, I think, I think those are the big ones. The last one I'll say is like, question everything. Mm -hmm. Like, don't, don't assume that something because it's already been built and it's, it is there, it's not up for questioning, not up for debate. You should, you can and should question everything. I think that's a very important product management quality. Chase every lead, if you will, like be a private investigator almost to like, why is this thing the way it is on the product? Why does, you know, if, if, if you're, if you give your clients 10 quit reasons to like, Hey, tell us why you're quitting. Here are 10 reasons. Why are those reasons selected? For example, why not reason X? Why not reason Y? Why are these the ones that made it in the list? Everything you'll realize as you kind of chase it further and further down has a reason behind it. At one point, either the limitations of the company were different versus now. And so when you chase those, when you question everything, when you're like superly, like supremely curious, I should say, then you can start to really drive impact and, and start to solve problems, start to make things better. Yeah, no, I, I really like that curious uh, trait. It sounds like a lot of people have that in them. Do you think that's something that people can develop? Yes, for sure. I, I'd say actually, funnily enough, I didn't, I didn't have that in me, actually. I was like, very much like, oh, if something exists, it must be because it exists. This is the way it is. I never used to question things. And I would question things, at least within the analytics world, I would question the data. But for some reason, I never translated that into like, oh, I should question product the same way. And so it's definitely something I have had to learn uh, in my product management journey of like being curious. And I think a simple way to do that is when you're looking at something, when you're examining something, when you're given a particular project, it's very easy to be like, 
okay, well, this is the thing I got. I just have to build upon it. Or, okay, this is the thing I have inherited. I just have to add this thing or whatever. Instead of saying, this is what I've inherited. How do I add or, you know, multiply it or whatever it is, build on it. Go and be like, why the thing that I was given, the, this thing that I've inherited, why does this exist the way it is? Because then this will tell you how strong your foundation is to then build upon things versus should you tear apart what you were what you have inherited and make it better there um yeah i think i think it's very much about like for any at any decision point asking why this is the way it is versus this is the way it is is literally the difference between being curious and not being curious that's like and then that that's how i've leaned into it myself and are there any other skills that you can like think of that you had to develop uh, as you got into product management or are you still developing? Cause like, I uh, no, absolutely. Thank you. Um, I think communication skills in a big way, actually, you have to communicate 90% of the time you have to, there is not a like for me every day on average i have four meetings at least some days it goes up to 10 meetings in a day and throughout all of those meetings is you're leading the charge so you have to communicate you have to know how to communicate firstly you need to know what is it that you want to communicate and then you have to pick the right words to be able to communicate effectively and like convey your idea in a in a succinct way but that also then communication then also ties in with organizational skills so like you need to have enough organization to know what is it that you want to pursue and then be able to communicate it effectively and then i think communication skills also le uh, leans well into what we were talking about as the first point which is you have to be open to defending your ideas. If you, if you don't, if you lack communication skills, you cannot effectively defend why is it that you want to do something or why we sh why you should do something. Yeah, and I think we talked about before we started this on ways to better build your communication skills. Um, definitely improv and Toastmasters, all that. Is Absolutely. It's actually, thank you for that reminder. Exactly. Like anything that can help you speak well, publicly speak well in, in situations, in random situations, be able to, whatever you think, be able to like say it in a way that's not mean or rude, but also very effective and assertive. That's going to be your friend in product management. And to your point and of like improv and stuff like that, the other muscle you have to practice Similar to what I had mentioned earlier, product management is as much art as it is science. You need to be creative. It is at the end of the day, in my opinion, my humble opinion, product management is creative problem solving. If you can, if you know how to be a problem solver, great. If you can do it creatively, even better. Yeah. Yeah. And we're almost coming up to the time, but my last question for you are. So quick. <laughs> I know. Uh, great conversation. I've learned so much so far. Um, last question. What are the metrics you use for, to measure your own success? Uh, this one is, uh, this is, yeah, it's a good question. I, it's, a, it's one that I think about, I think, uh, every day. Um, I think my two sort of areas that I consider metrics for success in my own personal experience of life is, did I learn something new from an experience, from a job, from a project? If so, what was it? Like verbalize it, actually verbalize it, not just like, oh yeah, I learned that, cool. Like what is like, Put it in an I statement. I learned to do blah, blah, blah from this experience to from this job, from this project, from whatever. And I think the second thing that I, and it's hard. This is not easy. 
But the second thing that I try to keep a measure of is, am I a step closer toward my higher purpose? Whatever that is with me that I've like agreed upon with myself, whatever my purpose is, whatever your purpose is, every day, I think it's a good question to ask yourself, are you closer to that higher purpose? Is your, because product management's amazing. It's a great job, but it's a job. Like how does it help feed your passion? How does it help feed your higher purpose? And if your higher purpose is to keep building impactful pro products for people and stay in product management, I think that's wonderful. Are you closer to that higher purpose today than you were yesterday? Yeah, no, that's wonderful. Um, yeah, no questions, it looks like, from the uh, audience. But any last tips or advice for anyone that wants to get into either health tech or product management in general? I think health tech is a very interesting industry to get into right now. Um, mental health, definitely, you, you know, see a lot of mental health companies coming into existence and it's a pretty booming industry as of right now. So mental health is a good place to be, I think, at the moment. I think physical wellness, as it gets techified, would be a great place to be because it'd be cool experience. It'd be cool experiences to build for clients, for people. Tonal, for example, those are amazing places to be, I think, as of right now. As for any sort of last tips, I would say that Product management is a great place if you like being in the driver's seat, if you like having impact, and if you're open to feedback, open to criticism, and are of the mindset of like wanting to learn consistently, learn constantly. Because otherwise, honestly, it can feel like a drag. It would feel like you're just getting kind of like have your head scraped through the dirt every day. Um, so you need to have a curious mindset. Uh, you need to have a learning attitude, any, any, any good thing, any bad thing that happens, what did you learn from it? I think that that would be, that's at least for me, been my sort of salvation as I have navigated the interesting waters of product management. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your journey, your experiences. And for those who have more questions for Sarub, you can contact him on LinkedIn. And again, if you're in SF, he's a, definitely in, an instructor, so you can have a fitness class with him as well. Thank you. Yeah, so come take my class. Thank you, Han. <laughs> I, I would love for you to come take my class too. Uh, yeah, for sure. I, I have to. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks.